Hi, and welcome to Lollipop Shaders RIS 100 How Did We Do It video. In this video, I'm going to run through roughing in three materials from the RIS 100 project beige fabric, green acrylic, and red metallic paint. So let's get to it. Let me show you uh, how we did it step by step. Okay, I'm going to go get BRDF Explorer. Uh, I'm just going to do a search in a browser BRDF. Explorer. And first one that comes up here, Disney's BRDF Explorer. DisneyAnimation.com slash technology slash BRDF.html. A great program and lots of good information on this page. But if you want to just download it right at the moment, go down to the Get Started section and you can download an already compiled binary for Win32 or there's a source code here as well if you want to do that but I'm just going to go here and I'm going to download this and once I get it installed I'll come back. I've installed BRDF Explorer and I'm ready to take a look at some BRDFs in it so I'm going to just concentrate on this window here and I'm going to load in some of the preset BRDFs that come with BRDF Explorer. Um, BRDFs and it comes with a uh, bunch of Blin, Blinfong, you know, a whole bunch of really familiar ones. And I'm just going to take the Blin one here. So it has some preset geometry, and we see the result of a Blin BRDF. Now there's some different ways I can view it. This is just a single spotlight. And if we go in here, we can uh, use an HDRI. And I'm just going to sample that a bit more. I'll stop that. Uh, which is great, and then there's an image slice as well, which gives you a nice close-up of the uh, specular. And But the what we want is to actually look at some of the Merle 100 data, so the next thing is to go find some of that Merle uh, 100 data for the three different materials we'd like to have a look at, and uh, load the BRDF uh, data into BRDF Explorer, and take a look at it here. So I'm just going to go do that and be right back. Back to a web browser and I'm going to go to www.merl.com slash brdf slash. Now this takes us to the Merl BRDF database uh, project description page. Where we want to go is to this right here. It's going to take us to the data and we're going to go to BRDFs and within there we're going to have all the binary information from uh, the BRDF project for the different um, materials. Now the one we wanted to download today was um, beige fabric, so I'm going to download that one. And then I also wanted uh, red metallic paint. I'm going to go to that one. Red metallic paint, and I'm going to download that one. And the other one that I was looking for was green acrylic. So, and that's there. So I'm going to let those download, and when they're done, I'll come back and head into BRDF Explorer with them. Back in BRDF Explorer, I'm going to close this window up here, and just to make a bit more real estate for that sphere. I'm going to load in the uh, data that we just downloaded. I've got all the Merle 100 binaries here, but we were looking in particular at beige fabric. And that's what beige fabric looks like. And we're also looking at uh, green acrylic. And I'm also going to load in red metallic paint. There we go. Oh, look at that highlight. That's fantastic. And I'm going to go back to lit object. And I'm going to load in my own sphere, which matches the sphere that I'm going to be using in Maya. There we go, and I'm just going to zoom that out a bit. There we go. And I'm going to load in my own HDRI. Uh, my favorite HDRI for look development is Foreclosed Dealership uh, from lollipopshaders.com. And there we go. Uh, I'm going to let these resolve themselves into finer images, and then I'm going to start using those images in Maya to create the uh, presets. The image in BRDF Explorer resolved itself to this, a great looking beige fabric. I have brought the same Sphere Geo into Maya, and I've also bought the, brought the same HDRI that I was using in BRDF Explorer in. So I'm going to select the Sphere, and I'm going to go Assign New Material. 
I'm going to go base materials and I'm going to select the LM diffuse. I'm just going to, there we go, and let's call it beige fabric. Okay, and we'll do a quick render just to see how that's going. Great, there it is. It's all working. I'm going to stop that. Now, I like to work with two spheres side by side or one on top of the, uh, each other, but if you're using it, you could actually use the wipe feature. So I'm just going to go to catalog here. I have the original image from down below also in it. If I select it and uh, go toggle background and I go to our original render, I'm just going to go see and with the wipe um, enabled, I can do this, which is a great way to work as well. I'm going to select this. I'm going to untoggle the background and back to our original render and close the catalog. Back to our diffuse. Um, we could do everything right up here, but I prefer to work in an LM layer. Uh, it gives a bit more flexibility. And we're going to call that beige fabric layer. Great. And if we go up, there we are back at the main level. And we're going to go down. Here we are. So we don't need specular for this. I'm going to disable that. and. We're going to start off with a diffuse color. Let's get the render going. Great, and here we go. Let's go over here, maybe select a nice midtone. There we go. And how's that looking? Uh, I think I'm going to go down to 20 here, and I'm going to take this up to 0 0.2. A bit more saturation really helped, and probably here. Let's take this up a little bit. Uh, 0.63 maybe. Okay, well that's in the zone. Uh, I'm going to add a bit of roughness. There we go. So we're getting some lights up here and darks in the middle. But the great thing for fabric is to use a sheen. So I'm going to select it here, and I'm going to use the original color that we had in there and see what that does. To tint it because this looks like a it isn't a pure white. That's not bad, but I think I do want it to be closer to white. So the great thing about this is we can overdrive. So I'm going to go one. I'll take it right up to one. And that's still not really there. I'm going to take it up higher. Let's try it. 1.3.5. Yeah. Okay. So that's resolving it pretty close. Uh, now normally I would take a lot longer and go back and forth and back and forth and get the colors a little bit better, but I'm going to stop here. Uh, and after I was happy with the sphere, I would go get some other pieces of geometry and uh, also render them in BRDF Explorer and bring them into Maya and do this same process again. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of that. For this project, I used a number of test models. A good spot to find uh, locations of sample models that are commonly used in testing is this Wikipedia page. And these are the ones that I'm using right now, the Stanford Dragon and the Stanford Bunny. I'm going to download this dragon and I'm going to go back into BRDF Explorer and Maya and see how that beige fabric works on this. I've brought the Dragon Geo into BRDF Explorer and done an image uh, for reference, and I brought the Dragon Geo into Maya, into the, our same sort of test uh, document, and I've applied the same beige fabric that we're using on the sphere. And I'm just going to see how that looks with this uh, sample model. And I'm just going to start a render up here. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's it's close. Um, and as I say before, I, I would go back and forth a number of times. I'm just going to increase the saturation here a bit. Yeah, that's better. So I'll just spend a little bit longer with this and try and match it up. And then I'm going to bring in some other test geo and see how that works. But for now, let's go on to a different material. Back in Maya and going to rough in green acrylic. This is the image from BRDF Explorer and we have the test geometry here. I'm going to assign a new material. Base materials, LM diffuse. I'm going to call it green acrylic. And 
again going to work in an LM layer just for flexibility. I'm going to call it green acrylic layer and might as well leave the specular on. I'm just going to start with the diffuse color though. So I'm going to come over here and sample the mid-tone. How about there? We have 153, so we'll just clean that up. 155, 525, let's go to there, and no, that's fine. Let's try that. Oh, and let's get the render going. That would help, wouldn't it? We'll add a bit of roughness to the diffuse just so we get some darks in the middle. Uh, could be. The specular is pretty hot, so let's go down there. First of all, we'll add a bit of specular roughness because uh, it's pretty sharp right now and it's really hot. So let's go to the refractive index and we'll go down to 1.1. Um, well, that's a little too little. Let's take it up to 1.2. Uh, nope, let's say hey, one five. Okay, yeah, sure. And the color doesn't seem right, so I'm just gonna go in here again and uh, just try another spot here. No, that's still not there. So, but I'll go back and forth a little bit later. And one thing to notice with this is the edge right here in the image from BRDF Explorer. You'll notice it darkens as it gets closer to the glancing angle being extreme and right here it doesn't so what I've found is that if we enable the clear coat and we don't like do it full on but we just do a little bit and in terms of refractive index I just leave it at 1.3 the roughness I'm going to take up a bit to 0.5 now you start to see this happening around the edge so that's not the darkening we're looking for, but if you go back to the refractive index of the specular and you start taking it up, there we go. So that's obviously a little bit too much. So I'm actually going to climb up. There we go. It's a interesting correlation between the clear coat and the specular that starts to give you this nice dark edge around here. And that's a good starting point for me. Um, I'll bring in a few other pieces of test geometry and go back and forth and try and get the color closer and the edge condition closer as well. Back in Maya and going to rough in red metallic paint. This is the image from BRDF Explorer. A couple things to notice is that the specular is colored. The edge condition darkens as it falls off. And there's also a glow or a bloom off the specular. So those are some of the things that I want to try and get into this material. Go into the geo, assign new material, base material is LM diffuse. Red metallic paint and LM layer. Red metallic paint layer. Great. Uh, I'm going to start the renderer going. For diffuse, uh, for a pure metal, we wouldn't be using diffuse at all, but because it's a metallic paint, I'm going to mix in a bit of diffuse. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select something down here and before I found that I had to go to somewhere around here, somewhere around here, and somewhere around point 0.2 for my diffuse. Now, that's all I really need to do here, no roughness. I'm going to go down to the specular, and that's really where this is all going to happen. I'm going to add a bit of roughness just because I find the default is a little bit too sharp, so 175. Refractive index is what's going to give me the overall metallic color here. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to sample um, sort of a color up here. Now that, of course, is going to be wrong 
because the refractive index needs to be 180 degrees swung on the color wheel. So I've got this 12 here. I'm going to swing it to 190, which is well, 192, which is 12 plus the 180. And then let's set this to about 4, 9, 4. And in terms of value, let's try keeping it pretty high, almost close to 1 which is sort of in the metallic range. Okay, so that looks pretty strange. Um, but it will look a lot better once we get in the, the extinction coefficient. So that's actually the color of the specular. So let's try and find a nice light pink from here and see, oh, that's starting to look better. That's looking much, much better. Um, so let me just check this color again. Uh, uh, let's let's try taking it just down a little bit away from the orange, and uh, maybe a little too saturated. So let's take it down to five, and the value is fine. There we go. So that's quite that's quite bright. So because it's a metallic paint, I'm going to um, actually mix in a whole bunch of the diffuse, and you can see it's starting to look pretty good there. Um, well, it's in the zone anyways. It gives us a working area. But the specular, we want these specular intensity here to match. So I'm going to go there. Um, but this is, of course, too dark. Because this glow or bloom here um, isn't showing up, I like to achieve that with the clear coat. So I'm going to turn on clear coat. And I'm going to take the refractive index down a little bit. And I'm going to give it a roughness of 0.1. Should give it a bit more. So we start to see the bloom there with that roughness. So that's not a bad starting point. Um, maybe we'll try just mixing this up a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, it's a good starting point. It, it's going to take a fair chunk of time to go back and forth, but it's got the key elements that I was looking for. Uh, I've got a metallic feel to it because the specular is colored. I've got that bloom and I've got the edge falling off. So that's a good starting point. I'm going to take a while working on that, so that's all we'll do for now. Thanks for watching the uh, Lollipop Shaders RIS 100 How Did We Do It video. Um, and definitely not some complete uh, materials there, but uh, three that are on their way. Thanks for watching. Bye.